So this right here is the molecule of thiamine hydrochloride. And what we're going to do is we react it with a hydroxide anion. And what the hydroxide anion does is the lone pair will grab this proton right here, break the bond, and the lone pairs go onto this carbon. The result of that reaction is this vanillic carbanion. This will act as our catalyst when we react it with benzaldehyde. Now that we've gone ahead and prepared our thiamine catalyst, we react it with benzaldehyde. The lone pairs on the thiamine is going to attack the carbonyl carbon and break this pi bond, and these pi electrons are going to be placed onto this oxygen. The result of that reaction creates this alkoxide anion intermediate. We then react the alkoxide ion with water. The lone pairs on this oxygen will grab the proton on water and will break the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. The lone pairs get placed onto this oxygen here. The result of that step produces an alcohol. And now what we have here is this tetrahedral intermediate. And because of the presence of this thiamine group, the molecule now becomes more susceptible to a deprotonation from this hydroxide right here. So hydroxide side grabs this proton. We break the bond. The electrons get put onto this carbon right here. This results in the formation of a carbanion. And what's special about this carbanion is that it's resonance stabilized. Normally, carbanions are not that stable because carbon does not like to hold the negative charge. But because it can delocalize the electron density, this becomes a very stable carbanion. What happens is the lone pairs will form a double bond and the pi electrons here will move onto the nitrogen. This creates our second resonance structure. The formation of this resonance stabilized intermediate explains why this proton is acidic. And this only occurs because of the presence of this thiamine group. Next, we take the carbanion that we had just formed and we react it with another mole of benzaldehyde. The electrons here on the carbon will attack the carbonyl carbon, break the double bond, and the electrons are placed onto this oxygen. This results in the formation of another alkoxide anion intermediate. But notice here now that this carbon and this carbon have now formed a bond with one another. So now we've successfully linked the two benzaldehyde molecules. Next, we get an intramolecular proton transfer. So the lone pairs on this oxygen grab that hydrogen, and the bond here breaks, and the bond here breaks, and the electrons are placed onto this oxygen. The transferring of this proton is fairly stable. Due to this five-member ring that forms during the transition state during the proton transfer. Next, the lone pairs on this oxygen reform our pi bond and we expel our thiamine as our leaving group. This regenerates our thiamine catalyst, which can go ahead and react with more benzaldehyde molecules and form our desired product, benzoin. Now, normally, this type of condensation reaction uses cyanide. However, cyanide is a very poisonous and very dangerous reagent to use in the laboratory. Instead, we opt for the more safer reagent, thiamine hydrochloride. Thiamine hydrochloride functions the same way as cyanide in that upon attaching it to benzaldehyde, it decreases the pKa value of that proton on benzaldehyde and allowing us to form benzoin. The next step 